Hey, what's going on, family? Um, no, I haven't made a video in a while. There's a lot of stuff I want to do topics on. I just haven't really found the time to sit down and do the stuff, to sit down and really get into some stuff, even though I've wanted to, like the keep sky killing and stuff like that. But uh, I plan on doing some more videos, so be patient with me. I'm going to start trying to upload a lot more videos than I have been. Uh, but real quick, I wanted to talk about this sister, uh, Charlo Green. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, she was a news reporter who, you know, got some fame by infamously saying fuck it on air and walking off because she was a marijuana activist. And I believe at the time she was reporting on a story about marijuana, I think. Uh, but I'm going to put links in the description box about her history so you can see what I'm saying in this video. But anyway, long story short, she did that. And she walked off the job to become a full-time marijuana activist. And she didn't like the fact that her job was restricting her and um, making her be per politically correct in a way that went against her fundamental beliefs. And that's admirable. Um, I, I respect that. But the reason why I wanted to discuss this video is because this sister, since she uh, did what she did in walking off her job so publicly... Um, and it, obviously it's a public job because she was a, a news anchor, a local news anchor. Uh, she went on to be, uh, like I said, a marijuana activist, like she said she was. And she got some and she got some fame from that also. But regardless of that, she uh, ended up starting a business in a state where marijuana is legal and when I say legal I'm not talking about medical marijuana prescriptions I'm talking about recreational marijuana um, Alaska Colorado and I'm gonna have to look up the other two states because they don't come to me immediately but there one there are two or four states where marijuana is legalized for recreation that means you can smoke it for fun and it's legal um, now of course they have limits on the amount you can have and the amount you can grow every state has that every state that's legalized rec recreational marijuana has those laws but still, it's legal, and it's legal for fun. Now, why I'm breaking down this story is, or talking about this story, is because this is a prime example of you can't do what white people do. Now, we all know that white people have already are already making millions in the marijuana industry um, in the legal states. I, I saw a documentary where. You know, these white people who own these recreational marijuana stores and dispensaries in these states where it's legal. First of all, they're making millions on top of millions. Second of all, these people are so proficient and so well versed. And this was when it first, when I saw this little documentary on TV, this is when it first got legalized. Okay. These people are so well versed and so uh, proficient. In marijuana that they can do things they can they know how to grow all kind of strains they know how to make weed in the liquid form that you can drink like literally and you know and I know that nobody gets that proficient in marijuana growth in marijuana strains and putting it in candy bars and making it so that you can drink it you don't get that proficient in weed in a few months these people have been marijuana connoisseurs for years, right? And the reason why I bring that up is back to the sister, uh, and I'm gonna put the link in the description box. She went and started her little legal marijuana dispensary, and they found some charges to trump up on her, and she's facing 54 years in prison. All right, and this is in one of the states where marijuana is so-called legal. And then you know they want to go back on, you know, federal law when it was or when it wasn't. Uh, legal that they they were getting her or watching her but they're not doing that to these white people who own dispensaries in her state and in other states where it was clear they were into marijuana before it was legal all right and she's being targeted and this is white supremacy she's being targeted because she's black and i think part of it too is the fact that she was so ornery about her the way she did she walked off her job 
at the white supremacist want to send her a message, especially with all the stuff that's going on with black people. And I'm going to tie this in a little bit more also. Uh, that that same kind of standing up for your morals could inspire black people, but in the way of standing up to white supremacy. So as you see, she she took the initiative to stand up to marijuana uh, demonization or marijuana criminalization. Now, most black people will probably, or a lot of black people, if they were to see that and want to be influenced by that, they would get that kind of balls about white supremacy. You know, standing up on their job and saying, fuck it, I'm not going to do this job if you're going to have me do things that are detrimental to black society. And we all know that white supremacy is dependent upon black people engaging and participating in white supremacy from the president and on down uh, in official capacities as, as a part of so-called doing their job. And if black people were to get that kind of inspiration for white supremacy the way this sister had about weed, that could be a problem for the white supremacists. And I believe she's being targeted. And this is just a, a, a prime example that goes to show you can't do what white people do. For example, uh, with the same drug, Malia Obama. She's smoking weed with a bunch of white kids. But yet they still feel free enough to take pictures and expose her and snitch on her even though they're smoking with her. Because they know that they can get away with what she can't get away with even though they're standing right beside her in the pictures. Now I know you guys will say, oh well it's because she's famous. Yes that's true. But it's bigger than that. Because we know that white celebrities are out here smoking weed with white kids too. But nobody's going out their way to expose white celebrities doing this. Because that's part of the trick bag of white supremacy they want to are not the trick bag but it's just part of white supremacy they want to you can't do what they do that's why we see in the laws when we talk about um, the drug laws and how we can prove that it's racist white people and black people use drugs at what the same rate and actually if you go by raw numbers because white people are a bit large share of the population and that's white people actually by raw numbers use weed and other drugs at five times the rate of black people but black people go to jail at ten times the rate of white people even though we use drugs at the same rate alright so this is the thing this is just an example and this sister probably thought she was um, different and that's the other thing I wanted to break down this sister is suffering from not understanding white supremacy and this is why white supremacy education on white supremacy is so important if this sister had been educated from very young that she can't do what white people do she can't engage in things that white people engage in openly now I'm not saying that even though I don't think we should smoke weed I have smoked weed I've smoked weed very recently even though I'm trying to quit all right I do dabble in smoking marijuana from time to time, so this is not a is not a open condemnation of smoking weed, even though I'm not endorsing it either. Because I want to, I'm even though I've only been on a short period of having you of since the last time I used it, I want to quit, and I want to say I, I've, I'm quitting or quit or have quit for good. I don't plan on using it again, uh, but at the same time, I'm not sitting up here condemning the sister for being a marijuana user. But you can't admit, you cannot confess to being a marijuana user or doing anything illegal around white people, even if they're telling you that they do it too. If a white dude tells me he smokes crack and weed and all of this and does all this slumming stuff, I don't care what he tells me. Around him, I'm the squarest dude, black dude you ever met. I'm not admitting to nothing, I'm not confessing to nothing, I'm not doing that with you because I can't trust you. We see what happens with people like Malia Obama and Charlotte Green when you do trust white people. You cannot do what they do. I, I, I drive for Uber sometimes. And I had two white dudes in my car and I picked these dudes up from a huge freaking house. Like a beautiful house. Alright? In a nice part of town. Okay? And they were coming from a party and they were talking about their jobs. And I was giving them about a 30 minute drive so I got to listen to the totality of their conversation. They both are doing very well for themselves. I mean, they're, they're lawyers and stuff like this, IT professionals. It was two white guys. One was a lawyer, one was an IT professional. And these guys are talking about doing cocaine, smoking weed, 
all of this kind of stuff, right? You know, drinking. They were talking about their brother and how he can't, how one of their brothers can't, uh, one of the white guys, how his brother can't drink and all of that. But, you know, he can do blow and all of that. And even though these white guys were talking about this and asking me, did I smoke, you know, and do I do any of this? I was like, nah, I don't do none of that, right? Because I know what the deal is with them. And this sister, unfortunately, and uh, I can get into this topic on itself a little bit later, but I could tell, and this may sound like I'm rushing a judgment on her, but I could tell that she was kind of wrapped up in the white liberal culture of obviously marijuana legalization, but also what comes with that white liberal culture is that false sense of belief that we're all the same and we're all included. And that's the danger of white liberalism is that it lulls you to sleep. And I also say that based on the fact that this sister was so caught up in that by the fact that she was using that activist energy to be a marijuana activist instead of being an anti-white supremacy, anti-racism, pro-black activist, which is what she should have been focusing her energy on because that's the number one problem on this planet. But the fact that she was caught up in that culture of marijuana legalization with these white people and that white liberalism culture that comes along with the, the mainly the people who are marijuana advocates or white liberals that's that kind of low you to sleep mentality so she thought she could do what white people do and now she's fa facing 54 years in prison for thinking that she could do what white people do and you can't I'm sorry as any black person you can you simply that's the point of this video is you cannot do what white people do and I can just tell you by, like I said, just by a vibe, a sixth sense. I don't have no confirmation of this, but I wouldn't be surprised if she's dating or uh, frequently engaged in sexual relations with white men, had got a lot of white friends, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not saying all that to disparage the sister, and I could be completely wrong. She could be one of the most pro-black people behind closed doors, but I doubt it because she walked off her job to be publicly marijuana Pro marijuana, but you you don't hear her saying nothing about black people, and now she's suffering the consequences for that because her her ignorance on the prevalence of white supremacy is what caused her to be a fool and be open about her marijuana usage and advocacy, and now they're trying to put her in prison for it. And as I stated earlier. You got these white people out here who are uh, clearly uh, lifetime users and officiate, not or long time, you know, not maybe if not lifetime, very long time users of marijuana, and they're not getting charges brought up on them. And again, this is in a state where it's legal. Okay, this is in a state where it's legal, so it is a, it is a, it's not a false equivalency. It's a fair comparison. You don't see no stories of none of these um, legal white weed sellers getting jammed up for marijuana. Even though you can find stories like in Colorado where black men, or you know where weed is legal too, where black men are still the number one arrestees and are still getting arrested at high rates for illegal marijuana possession. In a state where it's legal. This is why I'm saying we cannot do what white people do. And this sister could have avoided this situation where she's facing 54 years in prison. She could have avoided the situation if she would have just peeped the game on white supremacy and said, I can't do what white people do. I can smoke all the weed I want, but I can't confess to it. I better not admit to it. You know, especially not public. And honestly, you know, even illegally, we can't do what they do because that goes back to the drug war stats on how we use, this, we use weed and stuff at the same rate of white people, but we go to jail at 10 times the rate so whether it's illegal or illegal you cannot do what white people do and an understanding that you live in the system of white supremacy would take this would possibly I think or very strongly have prevented this sister from going to prison over this the way she is because the feds or, wh or whoever is arresting her um, and I believe it is the feds I'll put the link in the description box started watching her after she took this stand 
and started building their case against her. And it's and it's largely for transactions she didn't directly uh, engage in, but people who work for her business and were in representation of her business did engage in. And so they're charging her. So she didn't even directly do what they're charging her with. But because her name is on the business and undercover agents were initiating illegal transactions, which I believe is entrapment, but the law doesn't apply to black people. She is going to prison for this or potentially going to go to prison for 54 years for a plant that's so-called legal in the state that she was using it in. And this is why I'm saying if that sister would have been taking that energy to be a pro-black activist or at least just have been more aware or peak game on white supremacy enough to know that I can't be like white people. I can't be this open weed user like white people. If she would have known that, this could have been prevented. This is why the, why education on white supremacy, on the system of white supremacy is so, so critical. It's so critical. Because otherwise, you get, instead you get us so invested in everything but fighting white supremacy. We want to be LGBT activists. We want to be marijuana activists. We want to adopt all these white liberal causes. And I'm, a, I'm probably going to do another video to explore this subject further. But we don't have time for none of that. Once we get power, once black men get power to oppress, white, to oppress black women, for example, then we can have a black feminism. Once black people have power to suppress black gays, then we can have black LGBT movements. Once black people have power to make marijuana illegal, unfairly as opposed to something like alcohol for example which I believe is more harmful and more dangerous than marijuana then we can have black uh, pot legalization once black people have power to make all to oppress you with all these things until then all those things are things that white I don't care if you're a black female or a black gay person or etc all of those oppressions you feel are white people doing it but and like I said, I'm at the. I don't want to go too much off track, but misogyny, any kind of systemic, real misogyny, just like you know, real racism. I'm not talking about a black person calling a white person cracker. That ain't racism. Um, per, you know, being able to kill you with impunity, being able to uh, infringe on your economic prospects. That's racist. Same thing with misogyny and, 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 and homophobia and anything else. It has to have power. I can dislike something or dislike somebody for whatever reason. If I don't have no power to impact their lives, ain't nothing to protest. All right? You can just ignore me and move on with your life. Because there's never going to be, um, nobody's ever going to like everything about somebody else. I mean, not, not nobody, but everybody's not going to like everything about everybody. That's never going to happen. I don't care if it's religion, sexuality, um, profession, whatever, gender. There's always going to be some reason why somebody don't like you. All right. There's always going to be that. There, there's always going to be that. But power is the issue, and that's why power, black which black people do not have in relation to white people, is the number one issue black people should be dealing with. Not marijuana legalization not none of this other bullshit because it doesn't matter when you compare it to white to the system of white supremacy that we're all under none of that matters none of that all right and that's why i say this sister was caught up and just like the rest of us in following up behind white liberals white people pursuing their issues fighting their battles feminism etc 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 because we don't understand white supremacy and we're invested for our own egos in dismissing it and pretending like it's not there or like it's not the factor that it is. And when you do that, you make yourself vulnerable to what this sister Charlotte Green has experienced. And, you know, you guys let me know what you think in the description box. I'm going to put a bunch of articles. Let me know if you agree or disagree that she's a white liberal and she was caught up in that culture and that false culture and white liberalism in particular that false culture or that false like I said that false culture of, of inclusion when you're not included she thought she was right you know was equals with these uh, white liberals 
who are out here producing marijuana legally or fighting for legalization of marijuana. She thought she was one of them. But these white supremacists show her, no nigga, you ain't one of them. All right, and we're gonna show you you're not one of them by throwing you in prison for 54 years. Now this is an injustice. I agree, this shouldn't be happening. That's why I'm doing a story about it because I had one person comment to me on Twitter saying, uh, this is an injustice and we shouldn't have to accommodate injustice. And I, and I said, I agree, brother. But at the same time, we can talk about that all we want. She's facing 54 years of prison and I'm sure if she could go back in time and know what she knows now, she would probably have changed course or taken a different course with what she did. Maybe she would have still smoked weed. I'm not saying she would have quit, but I'm sure she, unless she finds a way to get out this jail time, because she hasn't gone yet, unless she finds a way to get out this jail time, I promise you, if she could go back in time, she would say, you know what, I'm going to rethink this because even though I want to smoke weed, being public about it is not worth 54 years in prison. All right, and just one last thing I wanted to add about kind of how uh, white supremacists they come around us too, and that's the other thing. Like I said, I don't care if they're pretending to be cool and all of that, like what they did with Malia Obama. They pretended to be her friend and pretended to be all cool and down. Yeah, Malia, let's party, let's party, and then you know they're taking pictures and sending them to TMZ and all these people. This is the Charlotte Green. She had a lawyer who I'm going to assume is white, who was her was her defense lawyer got all this evidence from her all of this stuff that she can snitch on her with and now has defected to the prosecution and she put this in the uh she tweeted this charlo green tweeted this that's how i noticed her own lawyer flipped on her and is now helping the prosecution after getting an inside track as being her defense lawyer lawyer this is the kind of betrayal you get when you don't understand white supremacy and you trust white people more than you should all right um like comment and subscribe i'm gonna leave uh, several links in the description box the first one will be the, of course that story about her getting facing 54 years in prison um, and i'm, I'm going to try to put some other links uh just so you can get some background on her if you don't know about her um oh yeah one last thing too uh her name her name is uh Egby, her last name is, and which is an African last name, which so I'm assuming she's probably from Africa somewhere, the motherland, or a direct, you know, first or second generation descendant of somebody who came from the motherland, not a descendant of slaves like most of us. But she went by the public name Green. Probably that's something to do with the marijuana legalization, but that was probably also another way of her hiding her Africanness or hiding her blackness. Because, like I said, I, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if. This sister is engaged in totally immersed in white culture, out, you know, in, in her personal life and the things that we don't see. Because I could just, from what I can see on the surface, like I said, I could be wrong. This sister could be trip, Miss Triple Black, but from what I can see, she's not. She's she's got that that, that liberal coon energy of I just want to fight for all people and the, and the and the justice for all, not just black people. And that's probably why I'm focusing on, on marijuana because that's something that includes all of us who love weed, you know, of all colors and all of that bullshit. Uh, and, and now it's coming back to bite her because she's learning the hard way. You ain't white. You can't do what white people do. Now you're going to suffer the consequences. And like I said, it's an injustice. I don't want to see your sister go to prison. I hope somehow she gets out of it. But at the same time, it, it's a hard lesson that for her and for the rest of us this is why peeping game on white supremacy is the number one part should be the number one priority for all black people as when it comes to social issues it should be the number one priority if if you're not gonna if you're gonna be a social activist you need to be about fighting white supremacy and nothing else otherwise you get you end up like charlotte green because our people don't have that. We're too invested in coon. We're too invested in pretending. 
you pretending that racism ain't there that pretending that all you got to do is get with some white liberals and racism will go away and that white liberals are aren't themselves a lot of times instrumental and in working in the favor of white supremacy and are even I would say more effective in perpetuating white supremacy than white conservatives because they are so sneaky about it all right because when you see an open white supremacist when you see a Klansman most 98 percent of black we do have some some severe coons but eight 98 percent of black people go on alert all right when you see this open racism but when you see this trick bag racism where they're pretending to be almost against racism or be against racism a lot of the times you get Joel Spingarn, and if you don't know who he is, he's the white founder of the NAACP who founded the NAACP as a spy organization on, on radical or potentially radical black people to go ahead and draw them in so that I, we can control you and know where you are. It was the modern day Black Lives Matter, but again, but I digress because all that's uh, a lot of the stuff I've mentioned, if to go deep on it, is a topic for another video. So, anyway, again, uh, I added that little PS on. Like, comment, and subscribe. Peace, family. Uh, talk to y'all on the next video.